What's up, everybody? My name is Jeremy Siskind. I'm the author of this book. I know, it looks a lot like that book over there. It's called Playing Solo Jazz Piano. And um, I'm going to start a little, I think, three-part series about modal piano playing, um, which I don't consider, like, <laughs> I'm not the greatest modal piano player in the world, but I know the rules. I can do it. I can teach it, um, hopefully in a way that is understandable. Um, so today, we're going to talk about three essential modal voicings that every pianist should know. Um, and so just to get it into your ear, I'm just going to play for a second, and then we're going to jump into some voicing. So here we go. stereotypical sound of modal jazz. Um, so the first thing is, if you're going to be accompanying in a band setting, what kind of voicings do you need to know? Um, and I'm here to answer that question. We're going to take a better look at the iPad and we're going to start with uh, what are called so what voicings. Um, a lot of pianists know these. They're very famous. Uh, they're from the tune so what. Before I get into the details of these particular voicings, however, I want to take a second and talk about how modal voicings are formed, because it's really essential as you get into some different keys to have a solid understanding. And if you really know how modal voicings are formed, it's uh, easy to create your own modal voicing. You don't have to stick to these three essential modal voicings that I'm giving you, uh, even though these are three really important ones from jazz history. So thinking about how modal voicings are made, let's think about how quote unquote normal <laughs> voicings are made. I don't know what a normal voicing is, but you know, thinking about you know, for two five ones or tonal pieces. What we're doing is we're taking specific chord tones. You know, we're centering the third and the seventh in the left hand, and those are always at the center. And we're making sure that they have really appropriate resolutions, right? We care a lot about voice leading, about tense notes resolving to less tense notes. Once we have that third and seven sounding really beautiful, you know, then we might think about adding color tones and having them resolve really nicely. You know, we might think about things like the fifth, the ninth, the thirteenth, uh, these, you know, kind of core elements. What modal voicings do is that instead of privileging some notes of the scale or of the chord over others, they flatten everything out so that the root, the third, the second, the fourth, they're all kind of equal. And to that end, now instead of finding certain chord tones and building chords based on those chord tones, we're going to use interval patterns that are nice sounding and appropriate for jazz. And we're going to put those interval patterns at each point in the mode. So the interval pattern for a so what voicing is a fourth, 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 and then a third on top. And then we're going to move that through the mode. And now here's where I find students getting confused, is that we're not literally transposing each of these intervals. We're, all, we're only going to use notes from that mode. So when I say a fourth, I don't mean a perfect fourth. It does happen in this very first voicing based on D that all of our fourths are perfect fourths. But we're going to be using different kinds of fourths depending where we are in the mode. So, and you know, it just so happens that the third on top for this first voicing and for the second voicing happens to be a major third. But depending on we are in depending on where we are in the mode, we might end up having a minor third instead of a major third. 
So it's not that we're maintaining the precise set of intervals, we're maintaining the same kind of distance within the mode or within the scale, if you prefer to think of it that way. So by a fourth, I mean two notes separate in the scale. By a third, I mean only separated, only leapfrogging over one note in the scale. Okay, so as we go the scale, these two actually, these first two are identical, but this third one's gonna be very different. You can hear that the bottommost fourth is actually a tritone or an augmented fourth, right? And the third on top is a minor third rather than a major third. So this one sounds different. And now we have up in the right hand, the F to the B makes up a augmented fourth again or a tritone. And so now as we're comping, we can use any of these seven voicings. Now I say that knowing also that some are going to be stronger than others, because even though we are considering each note of the mode kind of flat and equal, on absolutely equal footing, um, we are gonna have different effects based on where we are in the mode. Right? We still want to kind of hear the third and the seventh above the chord. You know, so for example, this one starting on A, it doesn't really go very far to defining the chord. We have the fifth, the root, the, the uh, eleventh, the seventh, and the ninth. So we don't have the third anywhere in there. So it's probably not going to define the chord as well as others. So I totally recognize that each one's going to have kind of a different effect. Um, but if I'm comping, and so we're using D Dory in here to, so we can choose all the white keys. I'm thinking really melodically while I'm comping. So instead of thinking about, I must keep my third and seventh in the left hand, instead I'm thinking about kind of making a melody and then harmonizing it using these so what voices. So, you know, I know that D Dorian can almost be like a cheat code because it's just all white keys. So let's look at C Dorian. So that's going to be the equivalent of the B flat major scale. So it'll be... first step for these modal voicings is to practice all of your modes. And you might think, oh my god, there's seven modes, there's 12 pitches, that's going to take me forever. What is that math? 784 or something? Uh, but remember that once you get C Dorian, you've got all of your B flat modes because the hand positions are going to be the same, you're just going to start in slightly different places. So you, you really want to just be able to burn through these. Our second essential modal voicing is the chordal voicing. And this is what's um, most associated with McCoy Tyner. Um, and this can be up to six notes. So the so what voicing you might have noticed was five notes. The chordal voicing, um, you know, that most powerful McCoy sound is actually a six note voicing, three in each hand. Let me back up to the so what, because that leads me to my point. I prefer to play the three notes in the right hand. So I always kind of have a triad of some sort in my right hand. Um, I don't know for a fact what the Elevens did, you know, or uh, what the, I don't know, there's a correct thing, but my preference is to have three in the right, two in the left. With the chordal, you really need three in each hand. Um, but there's definitely times when that is too shocking. <laughs> uh, you know, these are very abrasive, uh, percussive, loud, <laughs> dissonant voicings. Right, because if you have fours, that means that you're also going to have lots of sevens. Right? Um, yeah. Each note has a note that's in a seventh against it. Um, so this is stacking fourths, but it's almost like stacking sevenths, too. Um, 
And again, the type of fourth will not always remain all perfect fourths. It's based on where you are within whatever mode you're playing. And let me take a frequent question. Um, let me answer a frequent question, which is, why do we always do this in Dorian? It's weird, right? Um, I have two reasons for you. The first one is that, you know, I think so what and impressions are kind of our most two standard modal tunes to teach and to learn. And they're kind of held up as the, you know, uh, the uh, vanguards of modal tradition. So a lot of what we do when we're teaching is we're thinking about maybe those two tunes as really good places to start. So Dorian's a good place to start. But the other reason is that we just don't get a lot of Ionian. There's not a lot of major, you know, this major scale is a mode, it's the Ionian mode, but we just don't encounter it a lot in the wild, so to speak. Um, so Dorian just kind of seems like a natural place to start where we do use it as a tonic in modal music. Um, and it's maybe a different sound that people are used to. So uh, Dorian is kind of the standard to start your modal study. But remember again, once you get all of your voicings down in Dorian, you have all your hand positions down for any of the major modes. So these are pretty simple. Like I said, you don't always wanna play all uh, six notes. Sometimes it's just five notes. You can hear that that's considerably less dissonant, you know, or even. Sounds pretty good too, sounds pretty full. Um, I'll play this for you in C Dorian and you can kind of look at, look at it so you can check your work. I know my writing's sloppy. So again, the first step would be to practice your scales up and down. Um, and what you're doing essentially is you're playing the same mode six times starting in different places, right? You're playing it starting on C, starting on F, starting on B flat, starting on E flat. So it's really actually great training to make sure you know your modes really well. One interesting thing to note when we put so what and chordal voicings together is that the bottom three notes are the same. And one of the effects of this is that if you're doing left hand only comping, the most common thing in modal music is to play three notes arranged in fourths. You hear Chick Corea does this, you know, if you're his Matrix solo. Um, usually uh, their left hand, and Herbie frequently too, although he's a little bit less predictable, um, their left hands will be just three notes stacked in fourths. Our last type of modal voicing is one that I actually only recently started teaching and I call these pentatonic voicings because um, here all five notes are going to be part of the pentatonic scale and we're going to get all five notes in each and every voice. So if we're thinking about minor pentatonics, if you're not familiar with it, you can see me writing it now. It's drilling television. Um, so it's the root, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and then the minor seventh. I hope I did that right. And so what we're gonna do is we're not gonna have any seconds in our voicings, um, but then we're gonna stack up all five notes. So uh, the first one is actually a so what voicing. The second one is not. The third one is close to a so what voicing, but the third is not quite at the top. And then the last two, I believe, are fourths voicings. And you can hear that compared to, you know, the other two, this doesn't have any of those moments of conflict, right? On the so what voicings, the first two were very harmonious and then number three had a lot of conflict. Number four has a lot of conflict. None of these have conflict because the pentatonic scale is all open, uh, non-conflicting intervals. So these are great to use in a modal context or even not in a modal context. You know, if you're playing 
a tonal tune and you got, you know, you're playing Take the A Train. These, uh, these pentatonic voicings can be, they're just really pleasing to the ear. All right, so this is the minor pentatonic, but you could certainly just as easily do it with the major pentatonic. If you're not familiar with that, it's one, two, three, five, six. I'm doing it in C major. I know that that's not the relative minor or the relative of D minor. So I can make these same voicings out of a major pentatonic. And they're just great. There's not a lot of conflict there. They're very, um, they're like Switzerland. There's no conflict. Okay, and then just look at the same type of voicing on C Dorian. I did this wrong. Let's skip this. Let's go back to D Dorian. <laughs> I told you I'm new to teaching these. So those are three types of voicings that I would use. Um, so what, chordal, and then pentatonic. And you'll do a better job with the pentatonic than I did because I really messed it up. It should sound like this. All right, everybody, uh, stay tuned. Uh, next session is going to be about how to comp, how to learn how to comp in a modal context. And then um, the session after that is going to be about soloing on modal tunes, uh, including using some uh, going out, using some substitutions and some other things. So uh, see you soon.